Last week, we told you how Norfolk Southern trains often block a crossing in Monroe County weekly, if not daily, for up to six hours. The trains have also blocked first responders from getting to scenes and providing life-saving medical care. Norfolk Southern says the train blocks the Juliet Crossing for a number of reasons, like mechanical issues, staffing shortages, and even for crews to take, quote, mandated rest times for up to four hours. Ashland Webb spoke with lawmakers about what's being done to hold the railroad accountable. You're looking at a, anywhere from a 25 to 35 minute turnaround time. And when minutes matter, that's, you know, that's devastating. So that could potentially mean the difference of lives lost. There's commerce versus health and safety, but there's also ethics. I mean, don't they have a heart? I mean, what's the right thing to do here? People like Kathy Dean and Daniel Fulmore, who live on the other side of these tracks in Juliet, have to think about this daily. What would happen if they're trapped in an emergency when a train blocks this crossing? You know, with problems, there's, there should be solutions. I don't know if it's you know, increasing the length of the, of the pull off of the tracks or breaking the train after so long of a duration that it's, it's closed. In our past investigation, we found other states like Iowa, Illinois, and Washington State have laws that ban trains from blocking crossings for more than 10 minutes. But why doesn't Georgia and what's being done to fix the problem? We brought those questions to state and federal representatives. It's a real issue, it's a real problem. State Representative Dale Washburn, whose district includes Juliet, watched our story Thursday. He says since he's asked to sit down with Norfolk Southern to come up with a solution. Obviously, for a crossing to be blocked for six hours is just something that is not acceptable. Will you introduce a bill in the House this session on the matter? Well, uh, we have to know what the solution can be, you know, to say that you would introduce a bill. Uh, I'm not trying to be evasive about that, but I think we have to find out if there is a legislative solution. He says legislators will need to look at what's being done in other states and how effective those laws are. Not only is there no state law, there's no federal law, which folks in Juliet say Norfolk Southern representatives often remind them of. They say that uh, there's no law that regulates regulates them parking on the tracks, that they're allowed to park on the tracks if they want to and nobody can stop them. In August, Senator John Ossoff asked the Federal Railroad Administration for more information about why trains block traffic for hours. In a nine-page inquiry, he highlighted problem areas across the state, including the dangers of this Juliet crossing specifically. What would you say to companies like Norfolk Southern who are responsible for these train crossings being blocked for sometimes six hours, like in the case in Juliet? That we've got to solve this problem that we've got to address the logistical and operational challenges that are keeping folks in their cars or keeping first responders waiting for hours at these railroad crossings. And I'll work with them to achieve that. I'll work with the Federal Railroad Administration to achieve that. But there's got to be accountability. There's got to be change. We reached out to Norfolk Southern about what's being done to fix the problem. They offered to answer any questions over email, but declined to comment on camera. For 13 Investigates, I'm Ashlyn Webb. Senator Ossoff couldn't provide a timeline on when he or the Federal Railroad Administration will present bindings on the study. You can watch Ashland's full interview with Ossoff on our website, 13WMAZ.com. There you can also hear more about what lawmakers and Juliet residents have to say about the threat a blocked crossing poses to people's safety.